I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today, we have a Stanford swimming star, a speedo athlete. With Olympic hardware, we have three-time Olympic medalist Reagan Smith coming off a big performance at the recently at the Pac-12 Championships. Reagan, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm enjoying my Friday off of classes, and it's really great to be talking with you today, Mel. supposed to do our interview the day after pac 12s on a sunday and then like you're like hey no i don't want to do this on a sunday <laughs> i'm calling i'm calling you out i didn't want to do yeah. it either. I, I didn't want to do it either. i didn't want to do it on a sunday either. <laughs> so it worked out for both of us i could read your out. mind <laughs> were you a little bit tired um no no never never after a long three and a half day meet no i just didn't want to do it on sunday no other reason big performances um <laughs> You, I, well, you know, it, overall, most, most of our audience, most of our listeners know what happened. I don't, I don't know if they know all the, the details, but it's, um, you know, you know, I'd like you to fully unpack it. Tell me how you felt about it. How'd it go? Yeah, I was super thrilled with it. Um, it was just, it was a lot of fun to be out there competing with um, my team. Um, Stanford did a really great job. Um, and it's just, it's really fun to swim with the team behind you. You know, I've gotten the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, a few times with my club team riptide back back in the day and then um, a few times with Team USA as well. But um, getting to do it as much as I have in a row this season with, you know, dual meets and midseason meets and now Pac-12, it's just been amazing. And it makes swimming fast feel a lot easier and a lot more fun. Um, just having that whole team behind you, having your back. Um, it was just a great experience. Because everybody who swims year round, year after year after year, they're always told this gets better in college. And you finally know that, but you had the most extreme run up to that with the pandemic. Um, everything I'm hearing from elites is that they're exhausted and tired and it was a lonely experience. Um, how, how could you com compare what you went through on that, on, in, during that window of time to, you know, stepping on, stepping on campus in Palo Alto and getting the full experience of being a, a Cardinal? Yeah, it was um, a like 180 experience. Like I, I loved my extra time at home. I will say like the gap year was interesting. And sometimes I felt like, like left behind almost by all my friends, my age who are going off to college. Um, but I love getting to spend extra time with my family, my friends, my pets, um, coach Mike um, and Riptide. But it did, it did feel lonely at times just because a lot of, a lot of the time I was just, you know, hanging out by myself at home like with my dog or something. And like, I love that. I'm a pretty introverted person, but occasionally it got to be a little much. And um, it was tough too, because I didn't have a lot to focus on other than swimming. And so swimming really became the forefront of my life um, in that year, which I think was really rough, you know, just because the pandemic was hard for everyone. And for summers, it was, it made kind of swimming really tough for them too. And so I think I really struggled just because I didn't have a, a lot of things to balance my life with. Um, and so stepping on campus was really great in that aspect because I was just so busy. You know, I was doing a lot of things socially. I had classes going on, um, new things to worry about with the team. You know, I had like a new living situation. Just everything was brand new and different. And so it was a very hard adjustment, obviously. Um, but I think it was really great for me because it gave my life a lot of balance that I think I was lacking previously. Um, and I won't lie and say it was like a super smooth transition and like things just clicked immediately and it was perfect. Like it was, it was very hard. It really was. I missed my family and my friends a lot. I missed home a lot. Um, I didn't realize how much of a homebody I was until I got to campus. Um, so it was, it was definitely really tough, but going back to how great my team is like being able to lean on them when I like wasn't doing very well or wasn't feeling great. Um, they always had my back, like without a doubt, every single time. And Coach Greg and Coach Tracy did as well. They were just always there for me. Um, and yeah, like it, it was tough, but like it was it was so worth it coming here when I did. 
Um, and I think, yeah, like the gap year was worth it and the timing of everything, you know, worked out the way it did. And I'm thankful for it. And you step on campus with three Olympic medals. You got, you got, you, you're in right. medals for the rest of your life. That's gotta be a big relief. It's a milestone. I want to get to pack 12s. I want to, I want to ramp into this, the school year and talk a little bit about that, but just, you know, that's a big milestone in any athlete's career. And, uh, you know, how would you describe that emotion in terms of just achieving that? Yeah, I think I didn't appreciate it as much as I should have in the moment, just because I think I was like clouded. You know, I think I didn't have the best relationship with swimming. I had a lot of stress built up around swimming. Um, I felt a lot of pressure, external pressure and internal pressure from swimming. And my dream for so much of my life was to like walk away with the gold medal. And so to not do that, it was like really easy for me to feel frustrated and like I fell short. And so then once I got home, I was able to sit down with myself and be like, what the heck is wrong with you? Like your dream was, yeah, maybe did to get a gold medal one day, but it was also just to, to be an Olympian, you know, to make the Olympic team, to compete for Team USA at the games. And that's exactly what I did. And so once I was able to step away from the environment and like take some time off of swimming and like realize that, then I realized like how incredible that whole experience was. And it made me wish that I had been, you know, more thoughtful about the whole experience while I was in it rather than after the fact. Um, and so I'm hopeful that like, if I get the chance to experience that again in 2024, then I want to, I want to do it better next time just with, you know, the way that I think about things and feeling grateful for being there and not just getting caught up in all the stress and trying to get as far as I can. Um, yeah. Most athletes have to retire before they have the realization, Hey, I wish I would been more present when I was winning Olympic hardware. So you're, you're way ahead of the curve. (laughs) You're way ahead of the curve, (laughs) But, but you know, most people go to their first Olympics and it's their pancake Olympics. Um, they, cause it's, it's a completely different experience. People don't understand how much pressure there is. And, it, and it's so different from Pan Pax and, uh, you know, Pan, Pan Pacific championships, uh, world championships. It's just, it's, un, I think it's uncomfortable. It's just, it's, it's a different environment. It's not trials is, this is so different. And a lot of people, you know, they, it, you come on, you came away with hardware. That's a huge milestone. I don't know if you've thought, if you thought that through. No. Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to think that like, I came away with like multiple medals, you know, like that's something I didn't ever really dream of doing. I just always thought it'd be like one or something. And so thinking about how I was able to qualify in multiple things and multiple strokes is something that I'm extremely, extremely proud of. So, yeah. Now Palo Alto, like in the experience, you've got your, you know, you've got your, your teammates at your back and that it showed at pack 12s, pack 12s, Hundred backstroke. Yeah, you, know, you can take me through your races. Um, you, you, your hundred fly was um, was a forty nine eight seven, and then you followed up with the forty nine five zero Pac twelve record. It's um, you know, how do you feel about that day? I thought it was a great day. Um, hundred fly was really fun. That was kind of like like my fun event. You know, I I really like the hundred fly, and I'm I'm pretty good at the hundred fly. But you know, like backstroke has always kind of been my forefront. Um, over the hunter fly. And I got to do that with Tori and with um, our other teammate, uh, Emma wheel. And so that was really fun because we had a podium sweep and um, I got to swim next to Tori, which was super great too. Um, And she pushed me really hard and, you know, I got a best time by one, one hundredth. So like, I'll take a best time any day. Um, So it was just, it was just really fun. I remember I loved being on the podium and like hearing like Stanford, 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 um, like when they were announcing all of our names and that was just like super fun. Um, and Hunter back was great too. I was pleased with that. Um, I thought, I thought it was a fine time. I was super happy to get the Pac-12 record. Um, but you know, I also, I thought I had more in the tank than that. And so that really motivated me, um, for the 400 medley relay. Um, and I was really pleased with that time as well. And I just wanted to get our relay off to a strong start. Um, and I think, I think I helped set us up really well and we ended up having a great time and, um, we won that really as well. So it was just a really great night. 49, two, three on the, on the lead off, uh, breaks the record second time. Um, God, you're really great on lead offs. <laughs> really great. There's some great history there, Reagan. I just wanted to say as, as a casual observer, 
that you, you know how to you know how to do that. It's uh, your your two hundred fly. I was very vocal about your two hundred fly for the last two years because I'm biased. You've got you've got two hundred fly talent. You've got you've got it you've got it all locked up. How do you feel about that one fifty point nine nine? I was happy with that. Um, I think coming after my Saturday night, um, like I don't want to make excuses, but I felt a little lethargic in the morning. And so I think my prelim swim was a little like sleepier than I guess I would have liked it to be. Um, uh, so I don't know. I just tried to get like an extra good rest, like the afternoon in between prelims and finals and tried to, to come back strong that night. And again, I was, I was pleased with the race. I was like a little over a second off my best time from about a year ago. Um, I think I'm in a good spot for where the season is right now. And, um, I got to swim that with my teammate, Lily Nordman. Um, and that was really fun. We got to stand on the podium together. Um, and I just wanted to end off, um, my weekend in a positive way. And I really think I did that. Um, I really, I've always liked that race a lot. I had a lot of fun with it. So having it last, like sucks because it's a tough race but it's also okay because i really do enjoy that race a lot so um yeah overall i was really pleased with it everybody hits that 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 day and they feel numb you just kind of feel like you're just washed out and spent um so you know 150.99 that's solid you like you gotta like that yeah i do so yeah. now, I have to, now I get to push you on NC2A questions. I'm sure you're going to answer all of them in detail. It's going to, it's, it's just going to be a full unpacking. You're going to tell us all the Stanford secrets. You're going to give us the inside B from Greg Meehan. Um, swim Swam is, is, is it, they, everybody at Swim Swam thinks they're very, very smart. and They know exactly what's going on. They have your, uh, your NC2As is, uh, let's see here. What are you going to do? Hunter back. And then uh, day two, excuse me. The, the day two is going to be the hot tub. And, and cheering <laughs> that's gonna be no, nothing just hot tub and cheering and uh day three hunter back day four they're they're saying you're gonna do the 200 back 200 fly double how accurate is swim swam well i think they're pretty accurate on thursday that well maybe not accurate but that sounds like a good plan to me so i think i might take their advice on that one hot tub and cheering sounds like a lot of fun um, but like, I don't know. I don't want to confirm or deny anything. It's like, what's the fun in that? So it's like, just, just see, just see when it comes. I don't know. <laughs> it, you know, it, it makes for a great report. Um, I think a lot of people get excited about it. Everybody knows you could pull it off, but it would, uh, 200 fly, 200 back, 200 fly sounds just brutal. I don't, I think I've asked you this before, just out of curiosity, <clears throat> curiosity off topic. What's more painful? 200 back or 200 fly? Um, it's hard. I think if you'd asked me this a year ago, I would have said 200 back because my backstroke about a year ago is feeling really bad, like all the time. But my backstroke has been feeling very great for a long time. And so I don't, I mean, the 200 back never feels good, neither does 200 fly. But I think when I'm on in backstroke, I can like, push the pain away better than I can in butterfly sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I think I like the 200 fly a little bit more, which makes me like want to accept the pain more, if that makes sense. I don't know. But um, yeah, I would say, I would say for a while it's been 200 back, but lately I've been feeling the love and backstroke. So I don't know. Cause I don't want to say flies painful. Cause I don't want to set myself up for that, but that was a long-winded answer for me to not really give you anything, but there you go. Oh, you're getting so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I always, I always thought, to, I always thought 200 back was the most painful event because it, you, there is no, there's no rest, there's no stop. It's just engine and go. And 200 fly is rhythm. There, there feels like a, you feel like you have a. There, it feels to me like in 200 fly, there's a, a rhythm and a, and a pause, and and times to rest, if that makes sense. No, I agree. Yeah. 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 And that's what I think is so interesting because like, for example, like in 2019 at semifinals of the tuner back, I felt like literally no pain. And I don't know if that's because looking back, I'm like romanticizing the swim and being like, Oh, everything was perfect. And it was like such a good time. But I swear to you, I felt nothing in that race. Like it was the most bizarre experience of my entire life. 
And I've had a lot of incredibly painful tuner backs after that. But yeah, that was like really interesting. Like that was, yeah. Yeah. Slightly off topic, but yeah. Well, how do you, how do you make it? How do you swimming tuner back at the, and, and when you're in, at the top of the heap, you're, you're gunning for hardware among the best in the world. It's like, I don't know how it doesn't hurt. Right. It just, it, it maybe 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 there's so much mastery and your neural pathways have been laid down so well that it's just uh maybe maybe we should bring Aaron Pierce on into this conversation. <laughs> maybe <laughs> he looked like an artist swimming backstroke and it always looked effortless. But uh anyway, I appreciate I appreciate the answer. So let's let's bring it back to Stanford and Greg Meehan. Greg's known to Greg changes up lineups. Um, you know. It's uh, you never know what's going to happen with him. Is that is that sort of the feeling these next few weeks? Honestly, I have no information on that. Greg is a very good planner, and he'll like tell things. I don't know if he does this other summers, but I'll just like for me personally, my experiences with him. He's a great planner. He'll tell me things like way in advance, and I'll just forget them. And so then I'll just go through the motions. I'll, I'll trust his plan. And I'm kind of like, not swimming blind, because I'm like, all my trust is in him, but I'm just letting him hold the reins. And I'm just doing my thing. So like, if he is, I don't know if he's not, I don't know. And like, I'm not trying to like, play around here with my answer and like, not give away information. It's just that I genuinely like, I don't know, like, I just am like, I give him the reins and he does a great job with it. And I trust him. And I just do my thing. I'll accept that. The, okay. uh, <laughs> I do have to ask you this. It's, it's like, you know, you, you have, you're so young and you have this monstrous history in, in, in backstroke, you know, it's, uh, you know, you've been popping 57, three to 57, eight um, meters, you know, you're just like, oh, yeah, I'll do more, more 49s and backstroke in yards but this is like it's like I, it, it's where it's such a unique moment in history it's like there's so many great female stars in backstroke do you ever lay, it be, lay in bed at night and go you know uh it'd have been nice to have been you know five years in the future or, or 10 years ago it's, it, it's, it just seems like there's a concentration of energy the universe went we're going to have a lot of great backstrokers right now does it feel unfair you're like god man come on <laughs> Um, no, you're definitely right. There's like the talent in backstroke is absolutely wild, like nationally and internationally. And it can be easy for me to be like, yeah, life is like, this is so unfair. Like what the heck? But then it's just like, no, it's cool. Like it works. It makes me like really motivated. It makes me want to work as hard as I can, because then if I do come out on top at competitions, like if I am able to have like a really great swim and, and win a meet that's as stacked as, you know, NCs and Olympics and world champs and, you know, so many events are, then that's like, you're really competing with like the best of the best, like ever. And you're able to come out on top. So I think that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I try to look at it with like a glass half full mentality and being like, I'm with like the best backstrokers the world has ever seen. And like, it would just be really cool to be on top of such a talented list like that. So that's what I try to remember in practice and things like that to keep me positive. That sounds very healthy. <laughs> trying to be. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very shallow and, 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 and bitter. I would just be mad. I'd be, I'd, I'd be having <laughs> arg arguments fair. with, instead of having arguments with the universe, it's, uh, that's fair. I, the um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop swim nerding it here in a minute, but I do have to. We have some sources, and they're and they're whispering in our ears, and they're saying, "This is Stanford, a lot of elite swimmers, we have international team trials coming up the following month. Stanford might not have a full full rest for the the, the big stars going into NC two A championships. True or false? And who knows? Honestly, who knows? But like. With a full rest or not a full rest, I think that my teammates and I are capable of swimming really fast, no matter what. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm 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 always excited to get up and race. Like I'm always gonna you know put my best foot forward and try to go as fast as I can. And um, 
that's kind of all I have for you there. Like I said, like a little bit earlier, I give Greg the reins and I just go do my thing, but like never think that I'm going to like show up without the intentions of like swimming as fast as I can, I guess would be what I would have to say to that. <laughs> Accepted. The, uh, Perfect. we are, we're in, we're in March. It's women's month. We're celebrating women. Uh, do you have any athletes, you know, in, in swim or outside of swim that are, that, that you look up to and inspire you? I definitely do. Yeah. I, I have a lot of people that I look up to, you know, I look up to, um, my coach Tracy here at Stanford. I think she's a really, really powerful and positive figure in my life. Um, and I have, you know, my mom and my stepmom to look up to, uh, both both incredible women who have helped me so much in my life and who I've really kept an extremely close contact with during my time at Stanford because I miss them both so much. Um, And there's so many athletes um, in the world of swimming as well that I've looked up to for a really long time. You know, the obvious ones are like Missy Franklin um, and backstroke. You know, I just adored her growing up and I still do. I think she's incredible. Um, And Jenny Thompson as well, who I learned about after I, um, became one of Mike Summers back in 2015. And, and I learned about her path and how Mike coached her. And then she went on to Stanford and did incredible things throughout her whole career. And I just wanted to, you know, to be like her. And um, I had the privilege of meeting her back in like 2016 at Olympic trials. And I just remember being like in awe and thinking it was so cool to get to meet her. Um, and, you know, I look up, I look up to my, my team Speedo girls too, like being in the same in the same group of girls as like Kathleen Baker and Abby Weitzel and Haley Flickener and Katie McLaughlin. And now, you know, being with like Erica Sullivan, like it's, it's just a really cool group of people to be with. Um, just be, because, you know, like for those older girls, not necessarily Erica, cause we're pretty close in age, but you know, I grew up watching them swim and, um, I, you know, I looked up to them for a long time too. Um, so that's just really cool now to, to you know, be, be like on the same page as them and get to hang out with them and get to know them, you know, on a personal level. Um, it's just, it's really cool. I, I do have a lot of, a lot of figures in my life, so I don't mean to ramble, but yeah, it's just, it's really cool that I have um, the amount of people that I do to look up to and to, and to gain wisdom from. Stanford, your Stanford family, your Speedo family. Yes. <laughs> Deep with talent. Definitely. Did, did you see Jenny Thompson at, at trials um, last summer? No, I never got to see her. I don't think, but I do remember she like announced um, the event. One of the events I was in, I can't remember if it was like Hunter back to her back, but I remember she like did the announcing for it. And I like saw her on the TV in the ready room and she like mentioned me when she was like talking and I was like oh my gosh like it's it, that, that was really cool <laughs> but no I didn't get to see her um yeah I was a lot busier in 2021 than I was in 2016 unfortunately but yeah it, it made it it made it um it was cool to to know that she was thinking of me when she was doing that little piece but yeah right, Jenny when you you know when you retire and you have as many Olympic medals as she has and she she comes back to these events she just she walks around and it's just cameras are flashing autographs um she's moving fast so that she won't get stuck in the in the quagmire <laughs> just people needing her attention but uh it was good to see her and we, we were we're peers we were on the national team at the same time uh. she's uh she looks fantastic and, ha- and has a successful career. she's an anesthesiologist right yeah 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 so she's jenny's cool the, um, all right. I, th- th- I have a question for you, but I think, I, I don't know if it's a fair question because it's a, you know, we're not really, you're not done with this year yet, but, uh, I do think that it, it's always good to, to share with other swimmers who are, you know, are thinking about, you know, who, who are about to step into the college experience. You, the hard part of your freshman year is over. You're, you're into taper time. Hopefully if Greg lets you taper and, um, is there, but you know, I, I kind of like to ask, is there anything you would have done differently? Um, this past year and, um, you know, looking through the lens of like talking to a high school kid now that you've had this experience. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. I, I think, I really don't think there's anything that I 
would have done differently, honestly. I mean, this year was really difficult, but I think I think I handled it well. It can be really easy to like want to want to like give up as a freshman and just like go home back to your parents just because the adjustment's really difficult. And I think I'm proud of myself for like staying strong and not taking like random long weekends and flying back home to the safety of the safety of my parents. I think I ripped the bandaid off really well and just kind of got through those really tough times. And this, that honestly has nothing to do with swimming. Like, I just think the hardest part about freshman year is just like all the change of, of leaving home. And in my case, you know, going across the country and being in this totally new environment. Um, and I guess leaving the coach that I had for, for six years and just, you know, getting plopped into the hands of a very experienced and trustworthy coach, but a new coach, you know, in a new program. And it was just a lot of, it was just, it was just a big leap of faith. And I'm proud of myself for trusting the process and sticking with it and understanding that things are going to be really hard to get through sometimes just mentally with all the changes that I was going through. Um, But to know that like things always get better. And I think that was really great for me um, just because I, you know, I had my upperclassmates, upperclassmen teammates to lean on. Um, when, when, you know, things got really difficult. And so I think that is what I would share um, with high schoolers right now is to just like trust the process. And I feel like people say that all the time, but just like trusting that, like, this is hard, but it's hard for a reason and it's hard for everyone and things get better and things get easier. Um, And I feel like I was told that when I was in high school that like college was going to be really difficult. And I was like, yeah, okay. But like, you don't really understand it until you do it, just like how hard it can be. Um, And so I would say like, to take what I'm saying and take it to heart and believe it just because I don't think I did when I heard it. And so it kind of hit me like a bus, honestly, it was a big change. It was a tough change, but yeah. Stanford too. I mean, I I can't imagine the academic load at Stanford. Maybe maybe it was fine for you. It, It seems intimidating to me. Is that yeah. Good? Yeah. I was intimidated just because I took classes um, in the fall of 2020 just to get some credits under my belt. And then the last semester leading up to trials and the games, I didn't just so I could focus on swimming. Um, and so I came into fall quarter having not done school in nine months. And I was like, okay, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I haven't gone to real school in like a year and a half. <laughs> I like, I'm just, I'm not used to this because the pandemic, you know, everything was put online. And I started with um, a chill load just to kind of like ease myself into things, um, which is normal. I think that's something that most fall quarter freshmen do. And um, yeah, it was tough, but I think swimming has taught me really great, like time management and organizational skills. So like the course material has been difficult at times. Yeah. But I think that I manage it really well and I know when to, you know, put my phone away and do my work um, in like a timely manner and like get things in on time and things like that. I think that's like 90% of the battle in college is just like being organized. And so I think having that like skill in my, in my weapon bag going into college was helpful for me. So, yeah. Well, you got, you got your Olympic hardware. You've, uh, you know, I don't think I've talked to you since you became part of the Speedo family. That's that, that's checking the box. That's uh, mm-hmm. that's a lot of people don't think about that. But you know, if you're if you're an elite athlete, you're you, you want to go to the Olympics. You want to you want to swim in a great D1 program. You want to you want to go to the Olympics. You want to win medals. But you know, for me, it was like you want to be a Speedo athlete. It's uh, how's that experience been? Yeah, Speedo was the dream. It really was. Like I've been racing in them forever um they're just like they've been my number one like forever like ever since I started swimming and so it it was a dream for a long time but it seemed so far off in the future just because of what the NIL rule used to be you know I was like I don't even know if I'm gonna swim after college you know like how how good am I gonna be at that time like well will companies even want me like xyz whatever and so when the rule changed I was just like so ecstatic because you know, that dream finally felt attainable and it was like sitting right in front of my face and it was just something that I could just, you know, stand up and grab. Um, and so that was really cool. And it's been really fun so far. Um, you know, we haven't had 
a ton of chances to do, you know, any big shoots together or anything yet, just because, you know, the, the stress and, you know, the busyness of college swimming and academics and everything like that. But I appreciate how understanding they're being, because I feel like, you know, people like me and Erica and Kieran are just like, they're guinea pigs, you know, like they've never done anything like this before, but they're just really rolling with the punches and they're working really well with me. And it's, it's just been like the partnership of a lifetime, honestly, which is crazy. Cause like, it's, it's like my first one. So it's, it's just really cool that like my introduction into like the professional world has been as positive as it has been with Speedo. It's just been incredible. You're going to love the Speedo shoots. Yeah. Speedo shoots are fun. Speedo shoots are, are uh, that's like, that's like having a swim camp without having to work out. <laughs> it's just, it's just yeah, it's just crash services and and you know, new fun gear to wear and and pictures and makeup and and you know, and, and I liked all of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. that's fun. So it, it you know I have to ask you, what's in your bag? What's your go-to speedo gear? My number one go-to are the pink speed socket goggles. I love those to death. I will always be racing in those at international and U.S. swimming competitions. I love them so much. I used to be a vanquisher girl. And then something happened over the pandemic. I don't know if like my nose changed or something, but I was just like, no, like I'm not vibing with the vanquishers. I think I want to move on to the speed sockets because speed sockets always seemed like the more big kid girl goggles, you know, like vanquishers are kind of, you know, like what everyone starts with. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm ready to move on. And then I did, I went to the speed sockets and they were so comfortable and they made me feel so fast because like they were so like fitting well to my face. Um, and I've had a lot of good swims in my speed socket. So I love them a lot. And pink's my favorite color. So that's icing on the cake. Why don't you close us out and in, in like all the speedo athletes and share with us your make waves moment. I, I have thought about this a lot and I was thinking, you know, is my make waves moment like, when I got my first national record at the age of 10, or is it, you know, my world record in 2019 at world championships, or is it when I made the Olympic team last summer? And I was like, yeah, all those moments are great. But like, I want every time that I get up on the blocks or get in the water for my backstroke start to be special and to be memorable, you know, like I want to go into every race with the purpose of doing my best and the purpose of putting my best foot forward and the purpose of having fun and the purpose of, yeah, making it memorable. So I think I have a lot of like conventional races that like, or races that fit like the conventional term of, you know, making waves and, and having a successful moment. But I think, I think every race is, is a make waves race for me just because you know i want to i want to attack every race with the same mentality and feel proud of every race in the same way no matter what the time is you've been listening to the swim swam podcast stay tuned for new episodes every week you can take swim swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel for more videos as well 